Hi, my name's Tweak. My nickname suits me because I like to take things around me, give them a little tweak, and make them into something else. It's very fun to do this, at least I think so, and hopefully you will too. Today we're going to work on photo blocks. These are cute little chachi things that you make out of blocks of wood and old jewelry. So stick around and watch. It's going to be fun. Oh, and here we are. Here are some of the examples of some of the blocks that I've made. Uh, a few of them I've made have already gone out the door. People have said, oh, I like those, and they take them. But everything you see here is a piece of discarded jewelry. Most of them came from my Aunt Bev's jewelry box. Thank you, Aunt Bev. She's long gone. But some of these things, depending on where you take the piece, this and these two pieces were a set of jewelry earrings. And it's just depending on how you angle the piece depends on how it looks on the block. So I liked those. Um, also, you can take pieces and add them together. This is one of my favorites. It's just a little moon. It was just a little moon necklace, and I just added the little, little sparklies in with it. That's pretty. So really, your imagination is the only thing that keeps you from uh, making something your own and having some fun with it. It's very fun to... <laughs> tear these pieces of jewelry apart, especially when they're things that have not been seen in, well, in these cases, it's been decades since they've come out of the box. A photo block is a piece of wood that has a slit cut into it at an angle so that you can decorate it and attach a photo or place a photo or a business card or a Christmas card, greeting card, whatever you'd like. You could even do it for recipes. Um, it's just a cute little thing to have around. Photo block itself is made of pine. I don't make these, but I have a friend who does, and he's an excellent woodworker. He still has all his fingers, which I ask him, do you still have all your fingers? And he does. But he creates these out of wood that's left over, wood that he would probably toss away because he has no use for it. You need to find out which angle the slit is in the block itself, because if you don't, the picture will either angle towards you, or turn it around, angle away from you. And we want it to angle away. So see how that's pointing forward? Actually, if you wanted it that way, you could. But I like it to angle away so when it's sitting flat, you see the, the full picture or the recipe or whatever you're using this for. Business cards are really nice with this. So once you determine which way you would like your photo to go, I take a pencil and I put a little V or some mark that shows you where the front of the block is because that's where you're going to decorate. So when you paint the block, and it could be really any color you would like to use, I chose a matte black and it's just a folk art paint. It's just acrylic, very um, easy to find in craft stores. I had it in my craft box already. I'm just going to squeeze some out into a dish. And, ooh, okay, it came out. You don't need a lot to cover this block. Okay, and get a brush and start painting. What I like to do is paint the front first. Uh, your edges could be as neat or as messy as you want because at the end you're going to cover that up anyways with more paint. So I like to just pull the front and try to get a nice even covering on the front. Even though that is going to be covered up again later with more enamel, I just like the looks of it. And then I come to the other side. And see, we, we don't have to worry because we know where the front is. And paint this side. Pretty quick. So how soon do you think before I get black paint on me? Um, soon. <laughs> I'm going to put it down. It happened. <laughs> OK. I don't try to get down in there. And there we have it. Now, because I touched it, I'm going to go over a little bit. It's already dry in the front. And make sure I don't have any fingerprints, and I don't. So that's all done. Where's the front? Don't worry. We have it marked. And as soon as it's dry, we'll flip it up and we'll decorate the front side. Here is what I've got collected today. 
If you do any garage sailing, rummage sailing, estate sailing, or if you go to a consignment store, you will find jewelry that has been discarded by other people. Some of it's so old it has the old clasps on it, but these all have a potential to be a really pretty decoration on one of your photo blocks. You can tear them apart and then play around and see how you'd like to use them. I take a pliers and choose the ones I would like to work with. These kind of suit my fancy today. So what you do is just open that up and very gently just give the metal a little bit of a, see how quickly that turned out? Quickly came off. Discard that piece, keep this one. Let's go again. Here's an interesting piece. This is plastic with eh, probably rhinestones, I am not sure. I'm sure they're not real valuable. <laughs> I don't mind messing up and wrecking this jewelry because I'm going to put it to a better use. Here again, just give a very simple little nudge. And this is just glued on and it's off, out, stuck to my plier. And there you have another piece, potential. Let's see, let's do one more. Ah, here's a pretty one. This is the kind that you used to have to screw into the back of your earlobe. Oh. And come as close as you can to the body of the earring. This is pretty fragile. I don't want to bend the metal too much. So very gently, very gently manipulate that metal. Try to get as close as you can to the body of the earring. And a few more. You can feel it get loose as it wiggles and you're adding heat and it just snaps right off very easily. And now you have a little pretty piece to use in decorations and this piece of torture gets tossed. And let's do one more, because I thought some of these are so pretty. The ones that seem harder, here's another one, a little more ordinate with whatever kinds of uh, bead jewels these are. And again, it's got this, you gotta unwind it. You don't have to, but I like to have more space to put pliers. So got it tight. I don't wanna mess with this any more than I have to. So I'm just gonna very gently manipulate the back of the metal and I feel it, you feel it getting looser as you go, and there it is. So, you go through whatever you've got, and you have fun playing with it and find a design that you like. And now we'll go on to the next step. So here's what I chose. Out of all those earrings, I liked these three pieces. How I'm gonna exactly I'm gonna put them together, I'm not sure yet, because that's where the playtime and the fun comes in. I just liked the way they looked together. I'm thinking I might place that one in there and then have this leaf hover somewhere nearby I'm thinking and then it's got to fit on the front of the block so I have a painted block and make sure you look to see where the V is so that you have the proper angle for the photo or business card or whatever you're gonna use the block for so what I do then is I just notice that that's the front so that goes top and I'm gonna take a hot glue gun and once I've determined how I want the design to be, hmm, I'm wondering if I should just make it more simple. What do you think out there? That's a little more ornate, and it kind of pulls your eyes up to where the photo would be. So I'm gonna go with this right here. Now take my glue gun, and this piece goes first, of course. I'm just going to place some glue, just a glob of glue, don't worry about it going anywhere. It's mainly because this is metal, be careful you don't burn yourself. So I'm going to stick a glob of glue there and it's pulled up and it's ready for, I think, this little addition that I hope there's enough there to hold it in. There isn't. Okay, which means I'm going to have to build up the glue a little more to leave this. Oh, it's almost there. Give that a place to nest in and to settle. I'm gonna add a little more glue. The glue doesn't show. And make sure, because this is metal, this metal is gonna get hot with the glue, so be really careful that you don't burn yourself. And I'm thinking that looks pretty nice. In a few seconds, it will, yep, it's hold, it's held. Now I'm thinking I want this to be tucked in, maybe right there, I want, a little bit of the leaves going up, and I'm going to add some glue. 
pretty easy stuff. Just make sure you don't burn yourself because this will take your skin off if you let it. And I'm just going to place that there gently and let it sit for a minute. I can already feel the heat in these metals. And in a few moments, that is really pretty. So what we have here now is our completed design on the front of the block. We know it's the front of the block because we had very wisely put that little mark there to show it's the front of the block. Now I'd like to finish this off with a little bit of enamel just to shine up the front a bit. Um, the whole block doesn't have to be covered. You could if you wanted to, but I like the matte finish and I like how it does not distract from the photo or whatever you're going to use the block for. So what I do next is take any kind of, of nail polish, any color. I go for black, but it could be any color that you like. And it has a nice little, a nice little brush that's perfect for what I use next. Take a little bit and we're just going to go around the front. I just apply it around the front. It can be sloppy because we're going to smooth it out in a minute here. If you see any of the glue, it doesn't mind at all being painted with some of this enamel. And you can see from the difference See how that shines it up? Just makes it pop a little bit. Adds a little bit of a little bit of pop and fun. Makes it look a little classier. And it shines. It makes the piece shine. And this only takes a moment or so, depending on how much jewelry you have stuck to the front, depends on how much painting you'll have to do. In this case, there's hardly any painting at all. So I've got this side going. I've got a little bit of glue I'm just going to touch with the black and catch the edge. And I don't have to go in, I don't have to go around, and I'm looking to see, I think that looks nice. And there you have it. A finished piece. Uh, you have to let it dry. Oop, I see I missed a spot. So I'm going to come back around. You always come back and make sure, check, I missed that spot right there. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a couple touches. And I think that's good. There we have it. Pretty, pretty enough to display anything that you like in your dresser, at your desk at work. Nice. I really like it, don't you? Another way to use the blocks is if they come in a larger size, which I was fortunate enough that my woodworking friend had three larger blocks. So I took an old piece, an old brooch, and set it on the front of this block. I think it's beautiful. And you set a picture in there, and this picture is a little small for this purpose, but you can see how that just highlights the picture. It's so cute. And probably my favorite is this one here. Um, this is a combination of beads, earrings, and that came off of an old necklace, I believe, from the 60s. Our project is completed, and you can see the results. A very cute little gift you could give to somebody. You could keep it for yourself. Very simple. I like the whole idea that you're recycling wood that wasn't wanted, and you're recycling jewelry that hasn't seen the light of day since it was hanging on somebody's earlobe in the 1960s. And there's one more thing. If you don't want to paint, you can use fabrics and cover the blocks. It's a little more involved, a little more fussy, but you can see it's very pretty and can be very special. So if you like what you saw today, go ahead and like our page and subscribe to our channel. And it's been fun showing this to you, and I'll see you again.